Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mohammed Niaz with you. We are watching the seventh video of AWS networking. In the last couple of videos, we have covered basic components of AWS networking. So I hope now we are very good in how to create a VPC, how to spin a virtual machine, and how you can add rules and uh, secure your instances. With this fundamental knowledge, we're going to move to connect different networks in AWS. Let us start with simple topic that is VPC peering. When you have resources running in two different VPCs and if you want the instance to talk to each other, you have to create VPC peering and this brings the connection between the VPCs and then you have the choice to define route between the subnets in VPC. This demo is planned in a way to give you an understanding on VPC peering and also a recap of what we have learned in all the previous sessions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two VPC. One is private VPC and the other one is public VPC. Public VPC we will connect with an internet gateway and the private VPC we separate it from the internet. And we're going to run instances on both these VPCs. In order to communicate these instances, we need some way of connection between the VPCs. We're going to use VPC peering between these two VPCs and that makes the instances running in a public VPC can communicate, can talk with the instances running in the private VPC. So our agenda is to give you an introduction to VPC peering. Then we're going to start from the scratch. We're going to see how to create a, a VPC. Uh, we're going to create a private and public VPC. we we'll spin instances on both VPC. Then we create VPC peering. Then we create route configurations required for the VPC. Then finally, we're going to test connections between the instances in both VPC. So let us start from VPC peering introduction. VPC peering is about connecting between two VPCs and that enables you to route traffic between the instances in either VPC and they can communicate as they are in the same network. So this is something like you have a main site and a DR site and you connect it with an MPLS cloud or a VPN service something and that makes you to uh, communicate or talk to the instances or the resources running in your second site uh, like a local site. The same way if you have two VPC and this VPC instances in these two VPC can communicate each other as they are in the same network after VPC peering. The possible way of connections in VPC are between VPCs in your account can be connected using VPC peering and also between the VPCs in different account and between VPCs in different region. So this will help you to avoid the connection methods like a VPN or a other kind of uh, connectivity method because this give you some kind of advantages that you can read for in terms of security here. All traffic remain in the same private IP space and all the inter-region traffic is encrypted with no single point of failure. And the very good thing is traffic always stays on the global AWS backbone network. It never gonna go through uh, the public internet. The method of uh, creating a VPC peering is it start with a request and an accept. So as I told you, the possible connections include uh, VPCs in two different accounts in different regions. So uh, the honor of the requester VPC and also the honor of the acceptor VPC may be different. In that case, honor of the requester VPC re sends a request to the honor of the acceptor VPC to create a VPC peering connection. So there is a request and accept is required to complete the VPC peering. If you're going to do this from the same account or the VPC is in the same account, then uh, you are going to be the requester and an acceptor. With VPC peering, uh, you have to be careful about a CIDR block because you cannot create a VPC peering connection between two VPCs matching the uh, same CIDR block. So you need to have a map of your CIDR blocks in your on-premises and the other networks and make sure that uh, uh, there is no clash between the CIDR blocks in, in different VPCs. And also you can't have more than one VPC peering connection for the same VPCs and IPv6 is not automatic. You need to manually enable it. So that is all about VPC peering. Let's move to the demo session. We're going to start with uh, the very basic how to create a VPC in private and public. Then we're going to spin instance in both VPC. 
then we create a VPC peering, then create a route configuration for VPC, then finally we're going to test connection between the instances in both VPC. Have a look at the lab diagram. We're going to start from the very basic. We're going to create the VPC in uh, public and private and you can see in the private there is no internet gateway and in public we have an internet gateway then we create a route table we're gonna attach the internet gateway then we will have a peering connection after that the instances in uh, both VPCs can talk each other so in the session one we're gonna create the public VPC so we're gonna create a VPC then a subnet then a route table and an internet gateway then we have to update the route table with the internet gateway then we have to create security group add rules then create an elastic ip associate the network interface and an elastic ip then spin a linux instance into the public vpc so these are the steps that we need to do in the public vpc side when it comes to the private vpc we are not going to connect the internet gateway so we don't need an elastic ip to connect it from outside because private stay a disconnected uh, from the internet and we're going to connect it only through the uh, public VPC uh, instances so we don't need any internet connection to private VPC instance so let us start the demo log into AWS management console then go to VPC and create our first VPC we're going to start with public VPC here give a meaningful name web vpc then enter your cider block and make sure there is no clash with your on premises or other vpc cider block then click to create it then go to subnet and create a new subnet for public vpc then select VPC then choose an availability zone then enter the cider block for the subnet that should be a subset of your VPC cider block now the subnet is ready let's go to the route table it's easy actually because uh, it is it has given in the order in the left plane actually so now go to attach the route table with the vpc then you can edit the route table from here before that let's go and create the internet gateway give a meaningful name then click create now you have to attach this internet gateway to vpc then click attach now go to the route table and add this internet gateway to the route table when you look at the route table you can see any destination in the in the local route is connected to vpc any destination outside is going through the internet gateway that we have just created Now we're going to create a new security group. Now go to Elastic IP for the public IP uh, for, for the public instance. Now an Elastic IP has created. We need to associate this with a network interface. So let's go to the EC2 instance. Let's go to the EC2 console. Then from here, you can see network and security network interface. Then create a network interface here.
then subnet is going to be the public subnet that we have created and you can see uh, you have an option to enter the IP address uh, always try to give a IP address custom IP address instead of auto assign then select the security group that we have just created You can add rules, additional rules for the security group here. Now the ports what I have opened here is SSH from my personal IP that is public IP then HTTP from anywhere so that in, if it is a web server anybody can browse it any uh, request for to port 80 is acceptable but any request to port SSH is acceptable only from my personal IP and outbound traffic is all allowed so that uh, it, it's okay because your instance is going to generate the request uh, instead of someone gonna come inside now let's just go to the elastic IP and uh, associate elastic IP address to the network interface that we have just created we have only one network interface so it is easy otherwise uh, you might get confused about it so we have done with the elastic ip let's go and spin our first public instance for that uh, uh, go to amazon machine image and uh, select one of the linux image then go to the configuration details select the web vpc select the subnet then you don't need to assign any uh, auto assign public ip because we already created our network interface when we assigned uh, uh, elastic ip so go to go to the next uh, session from the security group choose to select an existing security group and select the one we have created or you can see the same rules there now it is time to launch the instance just have a look at the instance configuration then click to launch uh, the instance now the instance in public vpc is getting ready let us connect to the instance now the instance in the private now the instance in the public vpc is ready you can see the ip configuration and you can also try to ping to the gateway and the internet to make sure that the instance is ready uh, to uh, to run in the public vpc Give a meaningful name for the instance in web vpc so that uh, it will be easy for you to identify now go to vpc and create the private vpc we have finished everything related to the public vpc side create a vpc then give a meaningful name let's put private vpc then give a cider block and make sure there is no clash between the cider block in public vpc then click to create then go to subnets create subnet private subnet then select the vpc that is private vpc then select one availability zone and enter your preferred ip for cider block for the private subnet then click to create then close it now you don't have to modify the route table now because uh, we don't have any internet gateway and we don't have uh, 
anything to add so that but let's create one private route table and attach it to the VPC and associate it with the private subnet. Uh, make sure always that when you create a route table uh, specifically for a subnet it is associated uh, otherwise uh, things will not work as you have configured. So now you are done with the private VPC. Go to the EC2 console and uh, create an instance this instance we're going to place into the private vpc click next for the configuration details and select the private vpc then the private subnet you don't need to auto assign the public ip address we're gonna configure the network interface from here this time so you have options you don't need to pre-configure the network interface you can configure it here or you can pre-configure it and add it here and also the security group also that we're going to create it from here in the during the public vpc uh, we created it, the security group and then we attach into the instance while we configure the instance here we're going to configure everything while preparing the instance so both way will work so once you have all the uh, configurations just review it and launch the instance let us name the instance private vm so that uh, it is easy to identify now which one is uh, running in the public vpc and which one is running in the private vpc let us edit the security group rules here uh, if you are running a database server for example in the private vpc uh, these are the minimum uh, ports that you need to open for example the SSH and MySQL and then ICMP is to test it uh, like ping test so that uh, we can make sure that the connectivity exists between uh, the instances into VPC. Now we have done with the private VPC and public VPC. Let's go and create VPC peering. For that, uh, go to the VPC and select peering connection, then create a peering connection. Peering connection is very, very simple, but things may get confused, uh, depends upon how you have configured your private and public VPC. So make sure the ports are open, make sure the routes are added well. Now you can see the VPC requester is your public VPC and VPC acceptor is your private VPC. So I have created a request now, next is to accept it, as I am the owner of both the VPC, I am going to accept the request generated to create a VPC query. If it is a different person or a different account, then he is supposed to accept it. Now the VPC peering has done, the next step is to modify the route table of your private VPC and uh, public VPC. So this is the route table for the public VPC. I'm going to add a destination, which means any request come to this network. It means the private network supposed to be route through the uh, peering connection. So you can select the peering connection. We have only one peering connection. Just save the routes. That is all. And we will repeat the same steps for the uh, private route table. So go and select the private route table. We're going to repeat the same steps for the private route table. For that, uh, go and select the private route table, then edit route. Then the destination here is the cider block of your public subnet. Then target is going to be the VPC peering. Then click save routes, close. Now you are done with VPC peering connection and also the route table configuration. Now if you try to ping to the instance from public to private, you can see uh, the ping gonna work here. Now you can see the ping is, uh, is working. So this is how you can uh, create a VPC peering. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe my YouTube channel.